and welcome again to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about direct variation. Okay, well, what is direct variation? Direct variation just says that when you have two variables, y and x, that they vary directly with each other. As one changes, the other changes proportionally. So we say it's called direct variation because y varies directly with x, or x varies directly with y. So there are some requirements for direct variation. First of all, this a, so I'm going to say, if I say y is equal to ax, this value a is called a constant of variation, and that constant of variation needs to be a non-zero number. So this would be an example of direct variation, y is equal to 3x. The other requirement is that you're not going to have a constant. So an example would be if I had an equation y is equal to 3x plus 3. This is in a linear equation in slope-intercept form. If you have this value, this constant, then we no longer have direct variation. Okay, so in the equation, you just simply have the y, the x, and the constant of variation, which is what we call a. So a, again, must be a non-zero number. We can't have a constant. But what we do have a constant is we have a constant of variation, which is the coefficient in front of the x. And that's what, in most cases, we're going to find. So I say if y is equal to ax, then I can find out what a is by just dividing uh, y by x. So a is equal to y over x, and that's our constant of variation. All right, so let's take some uh, practice problems, because we're going to do both, the lesson and practice. And so I say write, uh, the first question, we have four of them, write a direct variation equation for the given values of x and y, and then identify the constant of variation. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with y, which is negative 9, is equal to a, which is our constant of variation, that's what we don't know, times negative 3. All right, so now simply just to find out what a is, we have to divide negative 9 by negative 3. Negative 9 by negative 3 gives us 3. So a is equal to 3. So now when I write the direct variation equation, it would simply be y is equal to ax. a in this case is 3. So I end up with y is equal to 3x. OK? Next question, write a direct variation equation for the given values of x and y. Identify the constant of variation. So again, I have y, which is 4, is equal to a times negative 6. Now I divide both sides by negative 6. negative 6, this reduces to 1, and I have a is equal to negative 2 thirds. I rewrite my equation, y is equal to ax, or negative 2 thirds x. Okay, number 3, decide whether the table below represents a direct variation equation. If so, create an equation and identify the constant of variation. All right, so when I input 0, I get out 0. When I input 1, I get out 3. When I input 2, I get out 6. When I input 3, I get out 9. When I input 4, I get out 12. So let's take two of the values, 1 and 3. And then we'll take 2 and 6. And let's see if the constant of variation is the same. If it's the same between those two values, and we see that we can apply it to all of the inputs and outputs, respectively, then we know that's a direct variation equation. OK, so 1 and 3, I say my input is x. My output is y. So I get <coughs> a, my constant of variation, which I'm trying to figure out. My input is 1, and my output is 3. So I can see that a, in this case, is going to be 3 divided by 1, or a is equal to 3. So let's take 2, 6. I've got y is equal to ax. In this case, y is going to be 6 is equal to a times 2. And in order to figure out the constant of variation a, I divide 6 by 2, and I get a is equal to 3. So I have two separate sets of coordinates where the uh, a value, the constant of variation, is equal to 3. So I can tell that this looks like a direct variation equation. And in fact, I can see that when I have 4, I multiply it by 3. My constant of variation, I get 12. 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. 0 times 3 is 0. So it looks like I have a direct variation equation. The direct variation equation is going to be y is equal to ax, where a is 3. So y is equal to 3x. OK, in the second case, 
I'm just going to glance at this, and I can see that it's not a direct variation equation. I put in negative 3, I get out negative 3. So my constant of variation needs to be 1. If that's the case, then negative 2 times 1 should be negative 2. So I'm coming up with, I'm entering <coughs> one value and getting a, a constant, entering another value and getting a different constant of variation. <coughs> and because the constant of variation is different between these inputs and outputs, we know it's not a direct variation equation. It's some other type of equation. So let's take this again as an example, write this out. If I have y as negative 3 is equal to a constant of variation times negative 3, I find out that a is equal to 1. So that's for my first set of values, negative 3 and negative 3. If I put a negative 2 for x, a times negative 2 is equal to negative 1. I end up with a is equal to negative 1 divided by, uh, <coughs> sorry, it should be multiplied by, negative 1 divided by negative 2, which is a is equal to 1 half. And I can see the constants of variation are different between the two uh, pairs of values, so I know that this is not a direct variation equation.